Ah, good afternoon to you. I'm sitting in uh, one of my favourite little churches this afternoon. As you can hear, the acoustics are very good. So I'm hoping you won't have any trouble listening to me or hearing me. Today, of course, is a very special day on the calendar. It's the uh, 6th of June, and of course, on the 6th of June, those of you that are in Western countries, the UK, America, Europe, will know that on the 6th of June, 1944, was D-Day, Deliverance Day, for um, <clears throat> the, uh, well, it was really the beginning of the end, wasn't it, for Nazi Germany, as the Allies made their push across the, the English Channel onto the beaches of Normandy and uh, marching towards Berlin. And of course, the Russians coming from the, from the east. And of course, we know what happened. The rest is history. Well, it's a commemoration day. And uh, I was in my local Anglican church this afternoon. Where we had a short service and some tea. And some elderly folk came along from the old age home just opposite the church. They weren't veterans. I don't think they were old enough to be veterans. But um, everybody was there and they had their little hats, little plastic hats on with uh, Union Jack on it. And um, we played some memorable videos and some music. And it makes you think about um, what war is all about. And of course, we know, as the scripture tells us in Matthew 24, that these are the days of wars and rumors of wars. But of course, the Second World War was something that, um, well, of course, in, in human terms, none of us would want to repeat the Second World War or the First World War, anything that's on such a global scale. But we know, of course, that um, in the last days, we're going to see a lot worse. But um, I was struck by what was said uh, this afternoon in the church and, and by what wasn't said as well. Um, the uh, lay minister who's uh, um, standing in at the moment because there isn't a particular um, appointed vicar in the church, and he, he was basically saying that he was, he was listening to one of the veterans on the local news yesterday. And this particular veteran made the statement that war is stupid. Now, of course, one can't really disagree with that fact. War is stupid. War, war is foolish, really. Um, both sides killing one another for, for territory or for ideology or for religion, put it in inverted commas. Um, so yes, the stupidity of war. And he also went on to say that uh, this particular veteran, that uh, there'll always be wars. As long as human beings are human beings, there'll always be wars. But um, this was mentioned by the lay minister. But I was hoping, really, that um, some hope would have been given. Yes, in human terms, wars will continue. We know that as a fact. We know that right up until the very end. And we know too that um, the last war that will come will be probably the war to end all wars. But um, the point that, that sort of struck me was that it's not just about the fact that There'll always be wars, we know that. But at the end of that, there's a glorious hope. And that is that war will end. The lion will eat straw like an ox. The wolf will lay down with the lamb. Jesus will return and bring sanity to his creation. And I was kind of hoping that that, that would have been mentioned in terms of the gospel, because there were a lot of elderly folk there, in fact, mostly elderly folk. My, my son came along with my wife, and he brought his friend along, who didn't know much about the history of it, so I was explaining it. But I was hoping, too, that um, for the elderly folk there that perhaps were, were not Christians, would have gone away with a little hope to the fact that when Jesus returns, that will be the end of war. He will set up his millennial kingdom. We know that at the end of the thousand years, there's also going to be something else. Satan will be released. But there will be a thousand-year kingdom of peace. And no weapon will be raised against anyone else. No sword will be raised. No gun will be raised. No aircraft will drop bombs. 
there will be a period of peace, un unparalleled peace. So I was hoping for that to have been mentioned because it's so important, isn't it, in these days that we take every opportunity, especially a day like today, when um, there will be people thinking about the losses. You now these, these dear men who, who fought in, in the war, many of them, uh, I don't know how many was, were Christians, how many are Christians, how many became Christians, but they, they speak, of course, of the devastation of, that they witnessed. You know, when you're, you're on the battlefield and you, you see um, one of your, your comrades literally just get struck right next to you and blown to pieces. One can't imagine, even like what's been described by what Hamas did in, in, in the 7th of October, the things that, that have happened to people through the centuries and up to now that... that for those of us who sit in, in quiet places like this can't imagine what it must be like. And of course, the Lord would want us to empathize, wouldn't he, with, with these people. And it just really struck me the importance of being able to give hope in these days. Yes, these days are getting darker. Yes, we know that. But the point is that we have a Savior. And he died to save us from our sin. He died to give us hope that there will be a time when all strife will cease, all fighting will cease. And every form of fighting, whether it's fighting on a battlefield or whether it's fighting in, inside your own household, that will all end. And I don't think at times we, we, we grasp that enough. We don't grasp enough the fact that we have this glorious hope. Well, I've come outside and... Um... As you know, the, the videos I make, a lot of my videos are filmed in graveyards like this. Places of death. And of course, on the film this afternoon um, on the, that we were watching in the church, they were showing the, uh, the graveyards, um, all the, uh, the little white tombs of the, the named soldiers, of course, many of them with, uh, not actually buried there, but just memorialized. And of course, that's what these stones are, aren't they? They're simply memorials. Never mind about the bones, but they're memorials to the once living, the once um, loving, those that had their hopes and dreams, as I've often said before. And uh, those hopes and dreams were taken away. War, of course, we know is a cruel thing. And of course, what is it? It's that desire in man isn't it to to have power to have control um all those those things that come from the the proud heart and the heart that um doesn't want to reconcile with the truth but of course sometimes war is necessary isn't it if we hadn't defeated adolf hitler i wouldn't exist today and uh, those around me that are not Jews would be speaking German and this is the reality isn't it this is the truth so we can be thankful in a sense for those that uh, and we should with the utmost respect remember those that gave their lives that were prepared to do that because um, the gospel has gone out through the peace and the freedom that we've had in the West take that point today because it's important that's one of the reasons the main reason that we have this this period of respite this peace and freedom is that the gospel can go out freely those of you that are listening to me in difficult countries will of course realize well it'll resonate with you won't it if, if you're finding it really difficult to speak the gospel in public and maybe you can't and of course we're also finding, aren't we, now that in the, even in the West it's starting to become difficult. We're fighting a war. And of course, we fight not flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, thrones and dominions, um, forces that are way beyond our imagination, that we can't fight alone unless we stand in, in Jesus. Remember, apart from him, we can do nothing. And that's the, the important thing to remember, that all things must be found in him. In him we must move and live and move and have our being. 
But of course, fallen human beings never learn their lessons. They'll always be the same thing. You know, it's, it reminds me of the Holocaust when uh, you often hear that phrase, don't you? Never again, never again. And of course, we know the, the um, concentration camps of the Boer War and how the, how the British um, fought against the, 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 um, the Boer forces. And of course, the concentration camps as well, the, the, the starvation camps in um, the, war, the Bosnian War back in the 90s. And we saw pictures of that, and it looked exactly like the Holocaust. It was no different. Man doesn't learn his lesson, not unless Jesus is at the heart of it, and not unless your heart is, is turned towards him. That's the only lesson that we can learn, because otherwise we'll just, we're just bound to keep on repeating the same mistakes. And it's the same for us, isn't it, really, as um, individuals. We're bound to keep on making the same mistakes, committing the same sins, coming back to the Lord, as, as Paul himself said in 1 Corinthians 7, that the good I want to do, I don't do. I don't do the things I hate. But in the end, of course, is the victory. Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It always comes back to him in the end, turning, turning our faces to him, recognizing who he is. So today, you, you may be fighting your own personal war. I don't know. Maybe uh, things are happening in your life where you're battling against something. You're battling against a person, a member of your household, a friend, a situation, a circumstance. Um, they're like little wars in themselves, aren't they? But we do have someone who can give us always a victory. And that Holy Spirit that lives within us is the comforter, the paraclete. He's alongside us all the time. And he's indestructible. And he is our defender. So I'm just saying that really to, to encourage you that whatever you're going through today, um, it will in the end become a history. The present becomes history and it becomes the past. And we can gain a victory. But of course, there are times when we feel hopeless, don't we? We feel as, I mean, I'm sure those poor men, um, when they got onto those beaches in Normandy, they must have wondered, would they survive to the end? Would they get through? And of course, most of them did, fortunately. And they were able to bring about the, uh, the victory in Europe that was so desperately needed. And it was a victory for the gospel too. Um, those of you that don't know, there were Christians praying all over the world at the time in the Second World War. Um, in Wales in particular, the, the Bible College of Wales that was run then by a man called Rhys Howells. Um, he wrote a wonderful book, Rhys Howells' Intercessor. Spoke about the, the, uh, the prayer campaigns of the Second World War and how they, they prayed particularly for Adolf Hitler not to turn his face towards the West and come across the Channel, which is what he planned to do. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and um, their prayer was answered and Hitler changed his mind and started to go towards Russia. And we know what happened when he did that. A lot of his troops froze to death. They weren't equipped. And that was the beginning of the end for Hitler. And I'm sure, I'm convinced it was intercessory prayer, not just there but across the world, that um, turned the tide of that war. And as I was saying on my other video the other day, that um, somebody was standing up in Trafalgar Square at the, at the rally the other week and was saying that this is a Christian country. Well, in name only, yes. But of course, we know that the, uh, the Islamic hordes are certainly... Um, coming in with their deceptions, their lies, and their laws to want to Im impinge them upon Western society. But God knows, God sees. And all we can do is pray, because there will be many that will never turn to Jesus, but there will be some that will. And uh, that will be a great testimony. And that's part of the testimony, I suppose, of, of, of um, 
the way that uh, people fight. You know, um, sometimes sworn enemies can become friends. I can remember being in Berlin in 1988 at a conference where um, German Christians stood up and uh, on behalf of their forefathers, their fathers uh, wanted to repent for the sins of the Nazis. And they stood up in this conference and it was quite an experience for uh, for me as a Jew to have Gentiles actually coming to me and saying that they were sorry on, on their father's behalf for what they'd done to our nation. And these things do happen. Reconciliations happen. And ultimately, victories happen. So um, on this evening, I thought I'd just leave you with those thoughts and uh, pray that, uh, as I say, whatever battles you fight, God is fighting them for you and with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you, he said. So let's just keep that in mind as um, the days go forward. Have a blessed evening.